If you're a first lady of a major city or a country, what do you do to protect yourself from constant criticism over what you wear? Recently, there have been two big scandals about what two first ladies wore in public. One, the first lady of New York City wore what many people thought to be jeans at a funeral for a police officer. And those of you not following New York City politics, if you don't live here, I don't know why you would. The police are very upset with the mayor these days. There are a lot of tensions running. Now, it turns out that the first lady was not wearing jeans. She was wearing an expensive pants suit where the fabric under the right lighting conditions in photography appeared to be jeans, but she did nothing disrespectful. It was nothing inappropriate. It was all a big nothing. And then just the other day, First Lady Michelle Obama was in Saudi Arabia, was not covering her head, as is the traditional custom in Saudi Arabia because of the religious beliefs there. Now, many people criticize this as, oh, she's trying to inflame religious tensions, she's thumbing her nose at religion. Other people were praising her for a quiet, uh, understated feminism. It turns out both sides were wrong. It turns out that it is simply not the custom of first ladies, presidents, other Westerners when they're in official business to cover their heads. Laura Bush is seen in photographs not covering her head in Saudi Arabia. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, they're not covering her head. Hillary Clinton, Condi Rice is not a partisan thing at all. So it turns out all the commentators were just talking out of their you know what. <laughs> I will be honest with you, I had circled that story as something I was going to do a commentary on and simply didn't get to it. So I could have fallen for that too. And it was just all a bunch of nothing. The First Lady was just following standard precedent. Now, a New York Times columnist earlier this week wrote that she believes that uh, First Ladies, women in politics, need to be aware of how their actions are going to be attacked, how they're going to be construed, and need to be proactive in setting the context out. Uh, presumably, in, the New York Times believes the First Lady should have tweeted that, hey folks, tomorrow I'll be in Saudi Arabia not wearing a headdress because Laura Bush didn't and Hillary Clinton didn't. It's not. Here's the problem with that theory. I definitely agree that everyone, First Ladies, men in politics need to be worried about how they communicate in a nonverbal way with their clothes, body language, etc. And it pays to really go out of your way to not offend so you can get people to focus on what's important to you. But the idea that you can anticipate every possible way of offending someone, I don't think that's realistic. Let's look at specifically the case of Michelle Obama. There is literally nothing she could do that would not elicit extreme, fierce criticism. I mean, she can't so much as say, maybe kids should exercise more and eat vegetables without getting just vilified as an evil monster. So I really don't think it's realistic to suggest that they can anticipate and deflect in advance criticism because everything they do, certainly Michelle Obama, potentially other first ladies, is going to be ripped apart by enemies who think first about partisanship, second about facts. However, I do think it is important for women in politics to, in this case, follow the example of men by trying to not offend. And not just men. Look at the example of Hillary Clinton. Now, Hillary Clinton has had her clothing choices criticized in the past, but for the most part, nobody ever talks about what Hillary Clinton wears. Why is that? Because for the most part, she wears everything from boring, plain black pantsuits to boring, plain black pantsuits. And occasionally there is a dark navy pantsuit. Now that's not going to win her a lot of fashion awards, but what it does do is eliminate constant chatter and criticism. And I think for a lot of women in politics they'll realize it's just not worth the headache of constantly being dissected. That's the beauty of what men in politics do, and for that matter men in business. 
what men in business do is they've got basically a few gray suits, <laughs> a few dark navy suits, a few other suits, stick to solids, stick to maybe a tiny little pinstripe. And you dress in a boring way, and then you take away the ammunition of your critics. They're going to have to focus on something else, your ideas, your policies, but not what you were. That's really the best advice I can give to women. Sorry if that sounds like I'm saying everyone has to be boring and bland and have no personality, but you've got to decide what battles to pick. If you want to really focus on ideas and public policy and public life, best to dress in a boring, predictable, same manner.